I'm Roger Reeves. I'm a professor at Johns Hopkins University School of Medi Medicine in Baltimore, uh, where I've been for a number of years now. Uh, and my interests have always been in Down syndrome and a number of different aspects of Down syndrome. Great. And you were speaking just a few moments ago about the particular gifts that individuals with Down syndrome and trisomy 21 might be able to give back in terms of providing genetic models that that give information for other congenital disease. Indeed, we learn a lot about uh, genetic conditions that affect everybody from studying people who have Down syndrome. And in particular, we've been able to identify genes that are a risk factor for congenital heart disease, the most frequent uh, congenital anomaly in all humans, regardless of how many copies of chromosome 21 you have. And in addition, um, we've been able to identify so far one, and we know there are more, uh, genes that help to protect people with Down syndrome from solid tumors. In other words, this is a very powerful approach to finding out not how to treat cancer, but to prevent it in everybody else. Interesting. Now you're involved in, with something that has a very interesting name called the Sonic Hedgehog. So can you tell us what the Sonic Hedgehog is and its involvement in your work? Uh, the first rule of science is when you hear about something with a funny name, it was discovered in Drosophila, in fruit flies because they are very irreverent in naming genes. But it turns out that sonic hedgehog is a very important growth factor. It's a molecule that uh, regulates the development of many things um, uh, from the very beginning of embryogenesis onwards. And in fact, it's a concentration gradient of hedgehog that puts your thumb here and your little finger down there. It does many, many things. And we've been uh, interested to discover that it plays a big role in the development of the cerebellum. Uh, cerebellum is a part of the brain in the back here that's known to coordinate movement, but it does many other things. Uh, we found out that the uh, progenitor cells, the cells that are the immature neurons that have to divide and migrate in order to form the cerebellum, that those cells don't respond to sonic hedgehog as they should, or at least not as much as in a person who has two copies of chromosome 21. So it turns out there are small molecules, potential drugs, that act in the same way as hedgehog does, and if we give those to newborn mice, we can completely restore the growth of the cerebellum. So that is a, has been a surprising finding in mice. Uh, it has other surprising findings on the kind of brain functions that are affected, which go far outside the cerebellum, and we're trying to uh, learn a lot more about why that works. Interesting, interesting. Well, this is an event here, this international conference, which really honors the legacy of Jérôme Lejeune and his interest in bringing researchers together. He was so generous himself with his own research, mm -hmm. trying to encourage others to engage the work that he was doing so that there might be more rapid advances. Tell us what importance you see in, in an international collaborative event such as this. I think they're absolutely essential. Number one, uh, Down syndrome has not received the research support it should. Um, many people, including many scientists, look at the complexity of this problem. Uh, inheriting an extra copy of chromosome 21 is actually the most complex genetic situation that's compatible with survival past term. Uh, and they looked at that complexity and thought, we'll never be able to fix this. And research funding reflects that, and the priorities of people who designate that research funding reflect that. Uh, this conference is a demonstration that the very small international community who has come together in some sense out of necessity because there aren't enough of us in any given place to do everything we need to do, uh, this conference belies that su supposition completely. There are probably at least six targets for which there are drugs or things that can be approved with drugs through proper clinical trials that are now making their way into that pipeline. And those are things that uh, promise to have a big ability on the, uh, or a big impact on the ability of people with Down syndrome to live more independently and to have a fuller experience in life. And that's such exciting news for parents to hear, I know, who uh, have young children with Down syndrome currently, that there may be hope even before their children get too far out of adolescence, or at least into their 20s, there may be real products or pharmacological agents that are able to assist them in their cognitive abilities and, and, and the protection of their health generally. Absolutely. I think we have to recognize that um, uh, 
due in a very large part to Professor Jerome's, uh, Lejeune's discoveries that um, we could uh, identify people who have trisomy 21 as a specific cause of intellectual disability and along with many improvements for those with any intellectual disability we found that um, life opportunities can be greatly expanded simply by improving conditions of life but this, uh, these pharmacological approaches, I think, represent a next increment to how we can help uh, further expand opportunities. That's wonderful. And as we work to bring the work of the Lejeune Foundation to the United States by establishing a foundation there, I know yourself, you're interested in applying for funds for your research from the <laughs> Lejeune Foundation. Possibly uh, very soon we'll be able to provide those funds from the United States and the application will be made there and the funds distributed from the foundation as it exists in the United States. That would be terrific. You know, foundation funding has been really critical for Down syndrome because of this bias against Down syndrome research at the NIH and in particular one institute. I think those problems are now straightened out, but it's been um, been very problematic. and. Uh, foundation funding has really kept a number of critical projects alive when they otherwise would have withered and we wouldn't be having these potential applications today without that.